For those of you that are watching part two of Technical Difficulties, thank you for joining us here at Hashtag Sports. Uh, we happen, the audio happened to go out. Um, once I find out what mouse crawled inside my, my um, tower, I'll let you guys know. But what we're going to do is we're going to cover on this episode, we're going to cover our predictions for the Seahawks versus the Buffalo Bills, as well as the lack of trade deadline things that happened with the Buffalo Bills. So make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but we had something where we cut off there we had it we had, joe said he was thinking of what was the question joe i was the, the driving question, me nuts you you asked us who was gonna have more passing yards yes. Allen or russell wilson Allen and or matt wilson. and clayton went with russell and listen if, if we're being all honest here i would go with russell as well but for the sake of a good video let's go ahead and play devil's advocate <laughs> um and, and it's funny, like, I've had 10 minutes now to think of a way to be play devil's advocate. I see Matt, like, leaning in, like, what are you going to say? I don't know. I got nothing, guys. I really got nothing. <laughs> Russell Wilson's going to outpass Josh Allen. The only way he doesn't – yeah, no, that went away. I was going to say, the only way he doesn't is if, if the Buffalo Bills defense creates turnovers. But even then, you still have the, the Russell Wilson throwing the ball to try to catch up at that point, right? So, yes. I mean, th- there's just – there's just very little chance, I think, because uh, I don't see the Buffalo Bills blowing out the Seahawks in this game. But if, if the Bills win this game by more than four points, I would be shocked uh, if the Bills win this game at all. Um, but yeah, I just I got nothing. I tried. You know, I, I, I went to have Skip Bayless and, and you know, Shannon Sharp do it. I don't know. I, don't know. I, think, I think that uh, I think he will. I'll then I'll, I'll, I'll stand on this side, Joe. I'll stand. Okay. You guys want to all stand on the Wilson side. It's very, it's low hanging fruit. That's fine. I'll, I'll stand on this side. Uh, and you know what the Joe, what you're talking about is the likelihood of, I mean, Wilson has six, six picks this year. So, right. I mean, in seven games. So the likelihood of him throwing a pick is probably very high. Yeah. Um, even though the Buffalo bills haven't thrown, haven't forced a lot of turnovers. Um, I mean, I'll pick Allen in the simple fact is I think that he will have for this, the reason that I think this game's not going to be as close as everyone thinks it's going to be, especially Vegas. I don't know. I think this is the this is game going to be very similar to the Titans, and I'm not, I I don't want to say that. You know, that's not mm-hmm. something that I want to say. But I think it's going to be similar to the Titans, where it's going to be very very tough for the Buffalo Bills to try to figure out what Wilson what Wilson's doing. I just think that the, the Seahawks are at another just a different level. Their defense isn't. But mind you, that's why I'm saying that Allen will probably have more passing yards than Wilson because Wilson won't have to. He'll be able to utilize the run a little bit more efficiently than he has in the past, and he won't have to throw for 300, 350 this game in order for them to win. You know, you look at a lot of the games that they've won. They've won by 13, 7, 1, 3, 5, and 10. So, you know, four out of their – I'm sorry, four out of their six victories have been, have been one-score games. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see that dynamic where – you know, hey, the Seattle Seahawks could be a 500 team right now. They could be under 500 just as easily with what's been going on. So it, it's going to be, uh, you know, put up or shut up time for the Bills. But I mean, I'll take Allen. I don't care. I'll take him. You, know, you guys want to take him out there. Um, but a big point that's been going on this week, obviously, the Buffalo, everyone in Bills Mafia, a lot of people, a lot of Bills fans wanted the Buffalo Bills to make something happen at the trade deadline. Uh, they didn't, but they did make a couple moves. Um so I want to start with Clayton, go to Matt, and then clean up with Joe. Clayton, the moves that the Bills did make, let's t- let's start with that because I know you're upset at the moves they didn't make, and a lot of Bills fans are, and, and I'm with you right there. But the f- the moves that they did make, do you think that this is a long or short term solution? I mean, I would say I would say they're both short term solutions. You definitely have to address both linebacker and cornerback in some in some variety this off season. My, my preference would be the draft. Um, but speaking of which, uh, Darren Lee, I really like what Darren Lee is going to bring to this defense. I feel like he immediately should eat into the snaps that A.J. Klein has been taking in, in, in replacement for Matt Milano on, I believe, has been first and second down these last two games. They've been rotating him in there on third downs. So I, I believe Darren Lee should eat into some of the snaps that, that uh, A.J. Klein has had over the course of his uh, – while he's replaced Matt Milano. And Daryl Worley, I, I'm really excited for Daryl Worley. I understand he didn't look great playing in Dallas this year, hence his release and why he was available. But I feel like returning to the scheme that he played the best in his rookie season, not, the, not his second season, but he, his best years were in Carolina, his first two years in the league. 
I feel like being plugged in this defense and not really having to be heavily relied upon and more so being asked to just not be a liability and be better than Teron Johnson in that area, because I believe if he gets plugged into this defense, he'll be playing nickel corner primarily. I feel like if they start rotating him in this week, that could be an opportunity for him to take that job and run for the second half of the season. So I, I like both signings for sure. Nice. Matt, thoughts on the uh, on the recent signings? Yeah, like I thought that they probably should have addressed defensive tackle. Um, I think that one of the big problems that they've had um, this season on defense, aside from, you know, one of the things I also like not to sidetrack too much, but we're not talking about like enough about like the change in there's so been so much continuity on this coaching staff to, to go, uh, you know, from, um, you know, one guy that's been there for a while. I, I'm blanking on his name now that uh, went over to Virginia Tech to um, uh, Tierlink, Bill Tierlink, to go from Bill Tierlink to Eric Washington. You know, I think everybody just kind of penciled in this like seamless transition because of all the Carolina guys that have come here. And Jerry Hughes has been really, um, you know, uh, complimentary of Eric Washington. But, you know, I think like maybe getting all the visions aligned, whether it be Washington, who was a defensive coordinator last year, Leslie Frazier, who's been a defensive coordinator and a head coach and Sean McDermott. There's a lot of, um, you know moxie there's a lot of uh experience in that coat in that defensive coaching room and sometimes i wonder sometimes if you have too many cooks in the kitchen and maybe that is part of what the problem could be and it's something i've, I've been kind of toying around now it's also a problem that you don't have star latula who as much as i think people kind of knocked him in years past we're starting to see why they decided to pay him so much money and sean mcdermott would bang that drum you're not going to see it show up on the stat sheet you're going to see it show up on the stat sheet for Tremaine Edmonds, who went to the Pro Bowl, and Ed Oliver, potentially. You go back to that Dallas game last year. There hasn't been a game. Did you hear that little sound in the background? Yeah. That, was my, that was a little toy off. The back <laughs> the um, you know, you haven't seen that that breakout Ed Oliver game. And I know that depending on who you read, there's some all 22 out there that says that Ed Oliver is playing really well. But I'm talking about that game where, you know, it, you don't need any of that, uh, you know, expertise to, to say, all right, Ed Oliver just killed it in this game. And so I think that, you know, I really would have liked them to, to add a one technique. The problem is you you got to probably figure them into next year's plans and Star is going to be back. That's that's kind of the plan. You got to re-sign Matt Milano. The money had to be right. There's only about five million to play with. So I think it was a little bit tr more tricky than even, you know, the most plugged in people were really talking about. But in terms of Lee, I'm very I'm hesitant to sit here and expect anything too grand from either of these guys that they're entering, you know, halfway through the season. I think to Clayton's point, I'd probably say Worley has a better chance sooner rather than later to make an impact. Um, Lee, I just, he's been out of football. He barely played last year for Kansas City. He, he was a special teamer. So if you're expecting him to come in here and play big time snaps and listen to the way the coaching staff is talking about AJ Klein. And I know they have to say a lot of it, but it seems like Leslie and Sean, I've tried to poke them the last couple of days and try to figure out, you know, if there's any hesitancy with how much they're playing him and from everything they've said, and they could be just, you know, doing a best poker face. They seem to still have faith in AJ Klein. So we'll see if that changes, but I don't think Darren Lee's this immediate fix that, that I think fans were hoping for. Mm -mm, no, Joe, what do you got, buddy? Yeah, I mean, just, just seeing Matt's last line there, the question is, was was there a fix in these units that was going to be available in the trade that we could get for the right price? I mean, and, and you know, as Matt said, with too many cooks in the kitchen, maybe they felt like there there wasn't that fix. I know a lot of Bills fans were upset about the trade deadline, but remember, we, we already gave up some picks for the 2021 NFL draft uh, in the Stefan Diggs trade. We need that draft capital because, again, we're, we're strapped for cap spaces is, so we need a we need to find cap space when we can get it, and we need to be able to to take that talent that we can <laughs> draft and and make that the talent that's going to move us forward. So, like Clayton said, you know, you look at 
some of these positions that, yeah, we're going to have to address in the draft next season. Uh, but what, how much capital you want to give up to trade for someone? And we did pick up two pieces. Now we could say that they'll have a big impact or minor p- impact in free agency. And there are still some pretty decent free agents out there. You know, I mean, obviously Vic Beasley just got put on the free agent. Now I'm not saying Bills fans that we're getting Vic Beasley. I'm not, I'm just saying that's the talent that you can find out there in free agency. And if that's something that you can see in free agency and, and go to that well, and it's actually easier to do so this year more than any other year due to the pandemic, um, why not try that if you feel like you need help? But as Matt said, I mean, everything we've heard about AJ Klein, uh, they still like him. They still like him where he's at. And, uh, you know, Bills fans might not like that. Uh, but at the same time, we have seen overall, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, we've seen improvements uh, from this defense as the season's gone on. Still not where we want them to be at all, uh, but we have seen improvements. So uh, we'll see what happens here in the future. Yeah. Let me just add to, let me just add real quick. I don't know how much more listening to you talk there. I don't know how much they actually do love AJ Klein. Cause if you go back to before Tyrell Dotson was hurt, they played Tyrell Dotson quite a bit. So mm-hmm. I think it's just, there isn't a better option right now. Mm-hmm. And another guy to keep an eye on. I mentioned it on our pod tonight, Delshawn Phillips. I was talking about him before he got hurt. And I remember everybody was surprised when he made the team. Mm-hmm. I actually broke that news and a couple of people in the bills community sent me private DMs, some high up ranking dudes. And we're like, and, and, and ladies, they were like, bro, are you sure on this? Like, are you sure Dalshawn Phillips is making this roster? And I'm like, trust me, man, this is locked in. Like <laughs> if this guy's screwing me over, everybody's going to know about it. And, <laughs> and so, um, but so that's another guy, Delshawn Phillips. I actually did a story. I'm doing a uh, story is coming out on him. I talked to Lovey Smith who, who coached him in Illinois and just raved about the kid and also had some cool stuff to say about Bob Babbage too. And their, their history together and why he thinks, you know, that's one thing that's been really troubling about this season is how the, you know, the linebacking core has kind of fallen off this cliff because they were so good last year. And I feel like a strength of this team, but I think that that's a direct result of what we talked about. Just guys not being able to stay healthy and then not having star. So uh, I think if they get Dotson back, who's healthy leads in the mix, you might see less climb. If you come on a, Hashtag sports show, and you mentioned Starla Tulele. The whole chat just un- unbelievably just torches me because last year I was singing that guy's praises, saying that the exact same thing. You're not going to see his stats in the stat sheet. Where do you see his stats? The 120 tackles is standing behind him, number 49. That's where this, his <laughs> stats go. Uh, you know, a true one, it is a true one technique. And, you know, Clayton and I have been banging the table for the Buffalo Bills to try to get another true one technique in there. And I told you, Clayton, you know, this is what I said. If they don't make a move for that guy, okay? One, I think, on a side note, is the fact that if they make a move for a defensive tackle, they know they have the highest paid defensive line as it is. They know that the guys they currently have are not doing the job, okay? So that sends one red flag up. Number two, if they don't make a move for a defensive tackle, a true one, they feel they have the guys in place. And that can even bleed into the, the whole A.J. Klein discussion if, if if they think A.J. Klein's the guy. I mean, going off of, I mean, Matt's point, you know, when, you know, when Dotson was in there, he was playing. When, Phil, you know, Phillips, he was playing. They have no other option right now. But if they do think that Klein's the guy, I mean, they have said, well, he's, he's always in position. He's always in position. Well, that being said, he's always in position to make tackles. He just needs to make a few more plays. The defensive line, maybe they're in position. They're, they're just not playing well right now. And like you said, the continuity with Washington coming in could be affected. But they could say they could be saying to themselves, listen, we don't have to make moves for these guys because we have the horses in, play, in place to, to make these plays. They're just not making the plays right now. So I think that you know, everyone that wants to say, you know, we, we should have signed Phillips. We should have signed Lawson. We should have, you know, signed these guys. Number one, you wouldn't uh, have the money allocated to sign Trey White, Deion Dawkins, and coming up, you know, Tremaine Edmonds and Josh Allen, number one. You wouldn't have that if you had to sign those guys. That's number one. Number two, you didn't expect Star Latule to opt out. You didn't expect that. Or else you probably would have threw a few bucks at Phillips, you know what I mean, to be your one tech. But – the guy played 53% of the snaps last year and, and, and happened into 10 sacks. You know what I mean? The guy fell into a, a lot of those sacks. And I, I think if you want to go back and watch the tapes, I think eight of those 10 sacks, Star was sitting next to him. So, I mean, you can, you can think with that what you want on that is the fact that Star was probably being double teamed in those plays. But that all intertwined, 
I think that Bean and McDermott love insurance policies. And what they did was this draft, this trade deadline or whatever, they went and got two insurance policies for themselves. They got a linebacker and they got a corner. They got a slot corner. I don't know why Sierra Neal's not playing slot corner yet. I, I don't know. I don't understand that. He seems like a physical enough guy to hold up any slot receiver at the line and throw off his route. And then you're going to have, you're going to have Wallace and, and White on the outside. I don't understand why they're not doing that yet. That, that's that's the thing that baffles me as far as the trade deadline goes. Um, do you guys have anything to add on that? Or, Well, re- really, I don't want to rule out the possibility of this defense regaining its footing from last year. I don't. Yeah. Because last year they had that rough stretch of three games where they couldn't really do much against the run, that being, if I remember correctly, the Eagles, the Browns, and I forget the other one. But they, they, they had a really tough time going up against the run, and it was really single-handedly why they were losing football games at that time. Yeah. And the last stretch of the season, they recovered so well to the point where they weren't just better against the run. They were one of the better teams in the league against the run during that course of time. So I don't want to rule out any possible defense re- recovering or refining their footing. I don't want to rule that out because it certainly is possible. I'm not sitting here and saying that they don't have the guys – or it definitely isn't going to happen. I, I can't say anything definitive. But what I will say is the one thing you don't have there, as Mario was just saying, is you don't have your true one technique defensive tackle. I understand if they believe they have the horses. I understand if they think that the, the guys they have in the room currently are good enough to get the job done. I just simply disagree. I don't mm-hmm. think, given the, the, the sample size that we've seen, half a season of film, and what they've done thus far, it's, uh, plus two of those games were against the New York Jets. I just, I'm not impressed. I'm not. I wasn't, uh, I understand J- Justin Zimmer saved the game last week against the Patriots, but that Zimmer-Phillips rotation was probably the worst on the field that game. It really was. That was really when you started to see this, the interior of this defensive line really start to get pushed around was when Zimmer and Phillips were on the field together. And I felt like, I feel like it's been evident the whole season. You need that true one technique defensive tackle. And I don't think nickel corner was the move that needed to be made. I don't think you needed a trade for a linebacker. I don't think you needed to make a single trade for this on this football team, aside from getting that one technique defensive tackle. Because if you get that one technique defensive tackle, your defense improves from front to back, meaning that you have the versatility up front that you planned on having going into the season. And your two middle linebacker, and your two linebackers behind the defensive line can do what they're supposed to do. This defense can function with the synergy that it's meant to, and schematically it's meant to to, to – um, be, be executed with. So I just felt like the, getting a one technique def- defensive tackle at the trade deadline was absolutely critical. I understand why they didn't do it. I understand how, you know, it takes two to tango and Sheldon Rankins. I apologize to the viewers. Sheldon Rankins probably wasn't the, the target that I had built him up to be considering he has a $7 million dead cap attached to him. If, if new Orleans were to have traded him and given how Davlin Tomlinson has played as of late and how Leonard Williams has played as of late, I just, it, it wasn't very likely that Dalvin Tomlinson was on the move. So maybe there wasn't any really negotiable moves to be made for them where it was a fair price for who they were getting and what they were giving up. But I, I really feel like they dropped the ball, not getting a one technique and you know, maybe they didn't. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to go uh, bold predictions and score. I'm I'm so interested to see because this is Matt's first time doing the bold predictions and and you know with hashtag on the score. Uh, are you allowed to give score predictions, Matt? Are you, is that something you're allowed to do? Or I am. I don't usually reach in and, and, and throw that out there on a Wednesday, but man, all right. <laughs> I usually like to watch a little bit more. I didn't even finish the the Niners uh, Seahawks game, but I feel like I've watched enough Seahawks this year that I could probably give you a prediction. All right. Right. It, it, the, we're not we're not calculating we're not keeping tabs on accuracy here man don't worry this is hashtag i mean our episode went out i mean for crying out loud <laughs> it's fun so i'm gonna go i'm starting with joe go to clayton and i'll have you hit clean up matt so um joe uh, one bold prediction for the game could be on either offense or defense and the score for the for the bills versus the seahawks all right my bold prediction on on defense will be that trey white gets his first interception of the season it looks like Clayton's not happy that I said that. So I'm ha- I'm Clayton threw his head back. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Wright gets his first interception of the season, and I'll even add on to that. That's not the only interception of the game. So I think we Ooh. get two interceptions on Russell Wilson, and Jerry Wright gets an interception. 
Uh, as far as score goes, again, I, I I have a hard time seeing the Bills win this one. But like I said earlier, the Bills have nothing to lose here. And I, I, I mean, I feel like they have nothing to lose because everyone's against them and they, they haven't proven they could be a playoff team yet. So I feel like there's there's a lot to say to that. Uh, but I still have Seattle win this one, 34-31. All right. Clayton, up to you. Bold prediction and score, my friend. Uh, I'm going to say Stephon Diggs scores two touchdowns in this game, especially if uh, John Brown is not going to be available. I think you're going to see Josh Allen really target uh, Stephon Diggs in this game and try and get and try, maybe even just force the ball his way. And, you know, it is a mismatch going up against this, this Seattle secondary. Um, but for a score, I don't know. People, aren't, or people really aren't going to like my score. Because I, I, I tend to agree with you, Mario. I feel like it's going to be closer to what we saw against Tennessee. But I'm going to take Seattle 37 to 23. Ooh, piece of candy. Uh, all right, Matt. We got a bold prediction for the game, and um, which is a bet of 20 suicide wings. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we got a bold prediction for the game and a uh, score. So I know it's Wednesday. We all know it's Wednesday. This is the only time I don't have kids. So this is why the episode gets dropped tonight. <laughs> what do we- Suicide wings. What do I look like, Drew Gear? <laughs> <laughs> you better have a bowl of milk ready. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, all right. So I think you know this is interesting. I, I just was looking at the the Seattle's uh, injury report, and it's worse than the Bills. Yeah. I mean, they are banged up, and they have a lot of question marks. Even getting Jamal Adams back, a groin injury for a safety, like that's that's troublesome. This. My bold prediction is I think Diggs goes over 200 receiving yards in this game. And I think he's going to get fed the ball. Even if John Brown plays, I don't think he's going to get the ball. And I think that, you know, they're just going to say, listen, hey, we gave up four draft picks for you. Go out there against Seattle and just carry us. But in the end, I just – dude, Russell is just magic sauce. And I just love – I love the matchup for the Bills because you're you're getting the – you're getting the Niners coming off two – back-to-back tough games that Arizona game was a shootout then you play a physical game against the Niners and then you got to travel west coast to east coast and they're banged up I like the matchup for the Bills in so many ways I think they're going to come back uh and and this offense is going to be better but I'm still going to go with the Seahawks and I want to say it's going to be 34-31 nice I like it I like I like that it's close I like that it's close um I'm going to start off with irrelevant information and then get to the relevant information. Well, both of these teams beat the Pats and the Dolphins, so this should be a really cool matchup. Should be a really, you know, good matchup for everybody. <laughs> so, I will um I think that with the Buffalo Bills going out on a bye next week and the Seattle Seahawks playing the Los Angeles Rams, usually teams, usually teams if they lose games, they're not really that worried about losing games out of their conference. Usually you want to take care of the division games first, then you want to take care of your conference games next. This could be a week where, I mean, they're two weeks removed from the bye. They have the Rams next week. I'm not going to say the word trap, but what I'm going to say is it could be like Matt said, you know, Seattle could be right for the pick in here. You know, we could all be wrong in this. It's in the Buffalo bills could just be just peak at the right time against a really good team. I think having beat the jets, Having beat the Patriots that are two and five, I think the Buffalo Bills are like, all right, we we have beat we have six wins against teams that have a forty percent win percentage, and we are zero and two against teams with an eighty win percentage. We need to beat a good quality team before we go into a bye to have some confidence. So my bold prediction is that, I mean, I don't know if I could top. Matt's Matt's kind of, Matt kind of showed showed us how it's done over here with bold predictions. <laughs> two hundred receiving yards a day. I think that Josh Allen will not only outpass Russell Wilson, he will outrush Russell Wilson in this game to a 31 to 28 victory for the Bills. That's what I'm going to say. That's a, and I know Clayton you, you alluded to my point earlier. I could see this being a 31 to 28 game in favor of the Bills, but I can also see a Tennessee game. If they do not get their sugar honey iced tea together, it's not going to be a pretty game. It's really not going to be a pretty game for the Buffalo Bills. Um, so, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen who joined us on the live feed, we wanted to apologize because, you know, hashtag is the land of te technical difficulties. Uh, we did want to, I did want to mention one more time that the hashtag heroes, if you want to be one of the hashtag heroes, 100% of all um, channel memberships are going to the Punt Foundation, Brian Mormon's Foundation. Uh, if you want to go do that, after you hit the subscribe button, hit the join button. Uh, I want these. I want you to follow each of these esteemed gentlemen. Their links are in the description. You can find them on NY Up, Believers Talk, and Cold Front Report. I'm going to go around the horn. Joe, Clayton, then Matt. Uh, let everyone know where they can find you on social media and what you got coming up on your channel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so you can find me on here on YouTube. Obviously, that's where I post most of my content. Uh, but you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram as well. Uh, also, want to let everyone know we are currently. I'm currently giving away a Don Beebe autographed uh, Buffalo Bills jersey. Plenty of ways to enter, so go over to BewareTheStampede.com. I partner with them, and there's I think six or seven different ways to enter. And watch my videos for other ways to enter as well. Uh, obviously, you guys can catch me throughout the week. Uh, Sunday, I will be live uh, streaming the game, or at least giving my live play-by-play -play reaction to the game between the Seattle Seahawks and our Buffalo Bills. So make sure you come on in on Sunday. I'll always have a good time. If you haven't seen my reaction to when Cam Newton fumbled oh, that ball, yes. uh, it's pretty classic. It's pretty good. It's pretty uh, – tells you how much fun we have over there uh, uh, during those live streams. So check that out. That was so organic, Joe. That was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. All right, Clayton, where can, uh, where can the fine people of Hashtag Nation find you? Uh, if you'd like to find me, my personal Twitter is at CFR Clayton. It's the same exact thing on Instagram. There you'll see me. Uh, mainly promoting the Overtime Podcast, which typically airs every Tuesday, 8 p.m. on the Cold Front Report YouTube page, uh, Facebook page, as well as our Twitter account. Uh, we didn't go live this week. Jeff had media obligations having to cover the election. So we'll be postponed until next week, but we will be, we will be back on track next Tuesday. But be sure to follow the Cold Front Report on Twitter at CFR, or excuse me, at Cold Front Report. And then on Instagram, it's at Cold Front Report underscore Bills News. And on uh, Facebook, it's Cole Front Report, Cole and Buffalo Bills News. And then on YouTube, it's just Cole Front Report. Yeah, you can find us pretty much anywhere and everywhere. Nice, like it. I, I, I start. I wasn't laughing at you, Clayton. I looked at Matt. He reached back and grabbed a toy, and I had no <laughs> idea what. This dude's just rocking out. <laughs> I've got a Guitar Hero guitar downstairs. Like, here we go. <laughs> All I had to do was turn that off at the beginning of the show. It would have never made no sounds. But yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Matt, where can the find well, – everyone knows who you are, so I guess you could just tell them where they're going to find you recently uh, coming up. Uh, shout out to uh, JTM at the Cold Rough Farm Report. Getting it done with Lorenzo. I love that show. The, the What is it? The, the pressure – bringing pressure? What is it called? The pressure Front. Pressure Front. There we go. Love that show. Uh, J, JTM's my guy. We both uh, – and Mallory too. James, um, they, you guys do a great job over there. Um, believers – I, I still want to know if you were on this this uh, message board back in the day. I think you were, but um, that's a conversation for another time. Shout Buffalo Bills football podcast. Find it. Subscribe, rate, review on all of the audio platforms. We're trying to really blow it out. We have we have guests every week. Uh, we go local media, national media, celebrities. We're working on Chad Michael Murray part two. Dude, Chad Michael Murray is a movie star and absolutely crushed it on our podcast with Bill's talk. I mean, he would put a lot of people to shame with his Bill's talk. I mean, this guy is a hardcore fan. Respect to him. Uh, we got a lot of stuff. We had a great show tonight. We're going to have more coming up. Um, and uh, hashtag sports, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, bye week's coming up, Maddie, And Paul and I are getting in the car. So just throwing that out to you. Just, just putting that Ooh. out there. Yes. Last time it was right at the start of the uh, pandemic, so we couldn't make it work. But I gotta get, I gotta get in the car. I gotta get in the car. We'll, we'll have some coffee. I will not we'll say that time. Paul says that I don't have to remove my kids' seats for you to get in there. I just want to say that. And Paul's a buck fifty, so you got you got some smack talk to, to tell Paul on Twitter because he runs nice. he runs the handle like on Twitter. So make sure you get some give him some smack talk. Um, I will. All right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hashtag nation. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be live for the post game. Paul's not gonna do a half game show, uh, halftime uh, show anymore because every time we do, the Bills lose. So we're not gonna do that anymore until they start winning. Uh, but we're gonna have our post game right after the game, and hopefully, I can be able to join the the cold front report once again for their post games. Uh, I think are we doing the uh, tailgate? Is the tailgate happening this Saturday, Clayton? I'm just curious. Yeah, it's happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> so for the it's for sure happening. Yeah. Uh, on the cold front report, we'll be going live yeah. with uh, Mario, myself, and uh, beat reporter Mookie Hawkins. 
Uh, I believe we'll be going at nine or nine thirty this week. We'll just be. Uh, I'm not sure. Mookie, Mookie might have something up his sleeve this week. Yeah, oh, I'm sure boy. He, he always does. Oh, boy. Well, Mario's sure. got to wear a football home, and I'm not forgetting that bet. I can't remember that bet. I don't know what that one was. I'll, I'll find it. Oh, no. It was – it was was it 300 Allen yards? Allen over 300. Allen? Yeah. Allen over 300 against uh, – well, I did say the Bills were going to outrush the Patriots. Where's my bet? I would make a bet. <laughs> we, we didn't make a bet on that. Oh, okay. All right, so for Believers Talk, Cold Front Report, NY up at Syracuse.com, we are hashtag sports. Guys, thank you for joining us, and thank you for your patience with our technical difficulties. We are out. Enjoy your evening.